Hi, and welcome to Discover Rhode Island, a show that features the cities and towns in the great state of Rhode Island. I'm Al Cerrone, your host, and today we're in the Cumberland Lincoln area, home to great businesses like CVS, Oakenite, Tiffany's, Twin River, and the Lincoln Mall. Before we chat with the mayor of Cumberland, let's visit one of Lincoln's favorite spots. It's pretty well known that Rhode Island has some great restaurants, especially Italian, but one of the very best is right here in Lincoln, Trattoria Romana, where I will be sitting with Luciano Canova, chef, owner, entrepreneur. Let's meet the man who operates eight restaurants in Rhode Island and nearby Massachusetts. Lou, your first restaurant was Luciano's in Rentham, Mass, but you decided to expand into Lincoln, Rhode Island. And now you have four restaurants in the same plaza right across the street from the Lincoln Mall. How did all that happen? When I came in, uh, in Massachusetts, I opened up Luciano's, and we got so busy that a lot of our customers that came from Rhode Island, they used to say to me, Lou, you should open up a restaurant in Rhode Island. So I started to look around, and then uh, finally I found this place across the street, the mall in Lincoln, and I opened up a Trattoria Romana. And this restaurant becomes so busy that you had a need to open the Express, which is right next door. When we opened up a Trattoria Romana, we got really, really busy, and we start to have a lot of to-go order. We was overwhelmed with the business, so we opened up a Trattoria Express. And that has its own separate kitchen. Everything is separate over there, but the beauty about Trattoria Express is you can eat very fast, you can take it home, or you can have your own party. We have a catering truck that can deliver it to you. And you had pizzas in Trattoria Romana, but yet you opened a pizzeria a couple of doors down. When we made a pizza to Trattoria Romana, we have a this oven that was too small. It can only cook two or three pizzas at a time. So we opened up a pizzeria Romana, authentic Italian uh, pizzeria with all fresh products, imported some Marzano tomato, fresh mozzarella. But it's more than fresh produce and ingredients. It's also recipes from the old country? Yes, when I go back home, I go back to my little uh, street in my old town that's 650 years old. The people never move from there. The same people, generation to generation. You know, the food is always the central attraction of the table, you know. You have a nice lunch or beautiful dinner, and then, you know, the food you eat is the food that, you know, your grandmother made, your great-grandmother made, is the same recipe. You don't change it. You don't go to a TV or a book and you find the recipe. They don't exist. So where are they all? Well, they're all in my brain, they're all in my head, and that's the way I learn. And that's what's all about, you know. I think that when you become a chef, you have to know a little knowledge about everything. And then you bring the best that you know in the plate. And the best that I know in my plate is my roots, my Italian food. Luciano, it was so nice talking with you. It made me hungry. So, mangia bene and salute. Rhode Island has a rich history of innovators, like Samuel Slater, father of the American Industrial Revolution. Well, we have innovators right here in Lincoln. Chemart, a company whose founder developed a process that makes them the premier photochemical etching company in the United States. I'm here with Richard Beaupre, chemist, inventor, and founder of Chemart. Dick, very interesting business. How'd you get started? I went to the University of Rhode Island for four years where I graduated with a degree in chemistry. That's what gave me the background to be able to do what we're doing here because it really is a chemical process. The film that goes on the metal is a photographic film. So I, I, what I did is invented a process where it could be developed in water. And you use that process to develop all the products that you make here? Yeah. Right in Lincoln? Yeah, that's right, right. Now, ornaments are the bulk of your business. That's correct. Approximately how many ornaments do you make every year? I'd rather not give it specific, but it is in the millions. Wow, that would be one very big oh, Christmas yeah, tree. Oh, a big one. So, Dick, who exactly do you sell these ornaments to? Let's start out on a local basis. Well, the town of Lincoln. We've been doing the town of Lincoln for, for years now. And any charities? Uh, yes, many charities. Uh, Gloria Gemma Foundation, churches, local churches. It could be anybody that wants to raise funds. And nationally, who do you sell to nationally? Well, we sell to the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the Senate. Armed Forces? Yeah, Armed Forces and the Clinton Library. Did I see a White House yeah, Christmas yeah. ornament? We, we began manufacturing the official White House Christmas ornament. We started the program in 1981 
and was still the exclusive manufacturer of that automobile. So you've been making the White House automobile, yes. let me see if I can do my math, for 33 years. That's correct. Wow, quite an honor for a company right here in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Made here in Rhode Island. <laughs> Let's go find out just how these ornaments are made. I'm here with Dave Marquis, president of Chemart. Dave, tell us a little bit about the process. It starts off with was well, working really closely with, with our clients, developing a unique idea for an ornament for their particular organization. So you have designers right here in the studio. We do. We actually have 10 of them. So the first step of what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to work with the client and they're going to create computer generated images. And if we go to a more complex ornament like a 3D, we actually we actually build paper models and then make physical samples so the customer can see them. So the customer has final say on the design. Absolutely. We want it to be their design. So while that's going on upstairs in the design area, in manufacturing, we're taking sheets of brass that are usually 18 by 24 inches in length and width, and then we go to a process where we put down a special coating on the material. Is that the dry film resist that Mr. Bopri invented? It is, and it is, it is a key element to be able to transfer the image of the art onto the brass. So what we do from there is we take the, the coated piece of metal and we expose it to ultraviolet light. That burns the image of the artwork into the resist, and that's how we're gonna transfer it onto the brass. We run through a secondary process called developing, just like photography, where it hardens and we can then handle the material in white light. It then goes through the first step of manufacturing, which is the etching process. And that's where we're actually gonna use a chemical called ferric chloride to cut the brass. So what's, what we do is we use specialized machines called etchers, and they have nozzles that shoot acid top and bottom, spraying acid on the whole sheet, but where there's resist, the acid is repelled, but where there's artwork burned into the image, the acid attacks it. After we do that, now we have to get rid of the resist, so we run it through a secondary process called stripping. That's where we're taking the, the, the resist off. And then we go to a uh, process called electrolytic plating. Now our first step in plating is to take it to a large vat of liquid nickel. Now the reason why we use, we use nickel is that brass tends to be fairly pliable. Nickel acts uh, as an agent to make the, the piece more rigid and more sturdy, and it also is a great bonding agent for our next process, which is our gold process. Um, the gold process is very similar to nickel. Again, with, we have liquid we have liquid gold, we use an electronic charge, hang the sheet in there. We use electricity and time to put the amount of coating that we want to put on there. Now, if the client doesn't want a gold finish, do they have other options? We actually have copper, nickel, gold, rhodium, and palladium. Dave, in looking at all of the ornaments you have, I notice some have many, many colors, 10, 12, 13 different colors. Yeah. How do they do that? What we do is we use a process called screen printing. Now, the screen printing process is where we take a screen, we lock it in place, we take ink that we mix, we use a Pantone matching system, we literally take a squeegee and pull it back and forth. The ink penetrates only where the image from the artwork is applied, it goes through and adds to the color. We then put it on an oven and it goes through the process. How many colors could you put on an ornament? It's really infinite. It's, it's really a matter of how much the client really determines that their particular piece needs. To the best of my knowledge, I think 23 was our, the largest amount on a single, you know, three, three or four inch ornament. I didn't know there were 23 colors. <laughs> So when we finish up with the screen printing, we go through an assembly process. Now we have to cut them off to individual pieces. What we do is we take these flat pieces and we, we bring them to our highly skilled assemblers. And what they're doing is they're actually forming them by hand. They're bending and forming and, and connecting all different pieces in, a, in an amazingly short amount of time. It's incredible the amount of dexterity and, and the skill level that they have. It's skilled craftsmen at their best. It's good old fashioned Rhode Island ingenuity, working hard, to create something unique to our clients and, and to the country. And who'd have thunk it? We who'd make have... the White House ornament right here in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of great things about Rhode Island that people don't know. Ah, there we have it. One down, millions to go. Whether it's a dazzling diamond engagement ring, a heartfelt gift, or something for yourself, come to Hanus Jewelers in Warwick. We carry all the new styles, the most popular brands, and a superb selection of loose diamonds and wedding bands. Grooms-to-be trust Hanoush Jewelers in Warwick for our expertise and their peace of mind, because we know you may need some help making just the right selection. Come see why the perfect marriage proposal starts with a spectacular diamond from Hanoush Jewelers, Route 2 in Warwick. Do you think there's a chance your Christmas may go something like this? Honey, you shouldn't have. Oh, it's nice another sweater. It's an extra large. 
Yeah, you like it? There's still time to get it together. Redeem yourself at the Anchor Subaru and Anchor Nissan year-end redemption sale. You'll get our best offers, and money isn't all you'll save. Merry Christmas, sweetie. Oh my goodness, thank you! Get to Anchor Subaru and Anchor Nissan on Route 146 or online at anchorautogroup.com. When you're looking for a great Italian restaurant, where do you go? Trattoria Romana, of course. Taste the flavor of Italy with our winter Mediterranean feast, chicken. Veal, pasta, beef, seafood, or pork. With your choice of soup or salad, just $17.95. Available Sunday through Thursday for a limited time only. Trattoria Romana at South County Commons. I am a Luciano. You're going to love my Trattoria Romana. Ciao. Sacucci is the name to drive. Sakuchi Honda's Best Deal Made Easy sales event is going on now. Lease the 2014 Honda Accord LX for just $219 a month. All fees included, zero down payment. Or buy for just $21,620. This is our best sales event ever, and it's only going on this month. Sakuchi Honda in Middletown or online at sakuchi.com. The best deal made easy. When you want Chinese food, look no further than the Asia Grill, located in the Lincoln Mall Plaza. Now let's go meet the family that's been serving Chinese cuisine for more than 40 years. I'm sitting with Charlie Chen, owner of the Asia Grill. Charlie, when did your family come to the United States? Well, my father came here when he was 13 years old, and he signed up with the United States Air Force, and after the war, he became a watch repairman for 22 years. Later on, with the changing of the watch market, he decided to open a restaurant with my Uncle Phil. Wow, and the rest speaks for itself. So tell me, what's the difference between the food that they eat in China and what we know as the Chinese food that we eat here in America? Well, the main difference is uh, in China there is more diversity in food and they don't refrigerate it. Over here, we just use the prime cuts and the local vegetables that are grown here. For example, we use chicken wings. So, well, for every chicken wings, there is a chicken claw. That's what they eat. It, that gets sent over from the United States, exported to China. And so they utilize dishes made with chicken claw on that side. So in other words, pot. they eat everything. They eat everything, yes. Charlie, I've been eating at Chinese restaurants since I was a kid. It just seems that the menus have changed. Tell me a little bit about it. Yes, in the uh, you know early 60s and 70s, People were accustomed to chow mein, chop suey, fried rice, all the basic uh, Chinese foods. As people traveled more and got more sophisticated, they demanded better quality food as well as diversified food. For example, General's chicken, uh, healthy vegetarian dishes like the tofu and vegetables, and more exotic dishes like lobster and the shrimp, in addition to the traditional poopoo -poo platter and the fried rice. Charlie, I notice how busy the restaurant always is. What makes your food so good? Well, we use the best ingredients, okay? For one thing, we use only the prime cuts, white meat chicken, gulf white shrimp, 16, 20 count, uh, fresh vegetables and all that. And so we have a large crew that prepares things in small batches. So everything is cooked fresh. And how about the wings? Oh, the wings, uh, jumbo wings, okay? The best wings made. Oh, uh, they're, they're my favorite. So tell me about the different choice meats that you use. For example, uh, we only use the USDA choice beef, the best cut, choice cut of flank steak. Ah, that's why the Asia Grill is a cut above the rest. Charlie, from the outside, the restaurant's very deceiving. When you get inside, it's very, very spacious. Yes. Tell me about all the different rooms. Well, uh, the lounge has a bar that seats 20 people, and then we have uh, two party rooms, one that holds 40, and this room that holds about 90. Uh, and then we have the main dining room with all the booths and everything. Now, can, can you have dinner or appetizers in the bar? Oh yes, of course, they serve at the bar, full and menu. You, and you can watch the game? And you can watch the game. We have two TVs, one in the bar and one in the big party. And room. how many do you seat in the dining room? The dining room seats about uh, 100 people, and the two party rooms together seats about uh, 120. So you basically would, could accommodate any size special party? Yes, pretty much so. When Asia Grill says family restaurant, they mean it. So let's meet the family. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi. Elle. Chanel, let's start with you. Takeout. I notice at the counter, it's so very, very busy. How much takeout do you do? What percentage of your business would you say it is? I would say it's about 50-50. How do you accommodate all of your dining guests and still orchestrate all of that takeout business? 
The reason we're able to do that is because we have a very efficient system in place in our kitchen. Everybody has a role. We have someone that's responsible for gathering and identifying the food, somebody that puts the food with each separate order. We have somebody who double checks the order to make sure that each item listed is present. And then we have someone who packs the takeout orders. And on the weekends, we even have someone who just brings out the takeout orders. So we're able to um, pack a lot of orders, big or small, in a very reasonable amount of time. So this is virtually an assembly line for food. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Now we know how important takeout business is to the restaurant. Let's talk about dining. Cheyenne, what makes the dining in experience so pleasurable? So we pride ourselves in giving great customer service to each of our customers. When a customer comes into the restaurant, our hostess promptly greets them and seats them. So tell me about the wait staff. We always make sure we have enough wait staff to take care of all our customers so that they leave happy and satisfied. There you have it, great food and service, a family tradition at the Asia Grove. Charlie, did you say well done on these wings? I had to go yeah. We've seen the best places to eat. Now, how about a place to live? I'm at the Kirkbray Group, another family-owned, family-operated business founded in 1961 by this man, Henry Richard, who developed 170 acres of single-family homes and apartments. But the interesting thing, wait till you hear how it happened. I'm sitting with Hank, Paul, and Greg Richard, the three brothers that run the Kirk Bray Group. Greg, I gotta know, how did your dad get started? In 1948, when my father got out of the Marine Corps, he went into the building business in East Providence. And in 1961, by chance, he, he went into a, a diner and sat down next to a total stranger who had told him the story about a dairy farm that he owned and he was gonna be building a golf course so that there was 150 acres of land that was available around the golf course. My father was very interested at that point. He loved the property and he ended up buying it. And a short period of time later, my father was hired to go over and build a new clubhouse for Kirkbray Country Club. And tell me about the origin of the name Kirkbray. The name Kirkbray is a Scottish name, means church on the hill. The gentleman who owned the dairy farm, his name was Nelson Church, and his home happened to be on top of the hill. Now that makes perfect sense. I understand there are three divisions that make up the Kirkbray Group, property management, sales, and construction. Paul, you're in charge of property management. How do you manage 150 apartments? Well, I have a very good staff. When I started, we only had 50 units. We have 150 now. So we brought another guy in that we've known for 20 years, and I have my two nephews coming into the business. Now, what exactly do you manage? What are the amenities? What do you have to do to keep 150 residents happy? We do soup to nuts. We do the landscaping, the snow plow removal. We do the plumbing. We do the electrical, even the painting, everything. We do the revamps of the units. So there's nothing really we go outside of. And are you 24-7 if someone has a problem at midnight? I suppose they call you. That's part of the business. Goes with the territory. Hank, you're in charge of construction. 53 years of building is a lot of building going on. What exactly did you construct? We developed 70% of all the single family homes, 100% of the apartments. You know, everything that we build, there's always a family member available for any problem. So you manage what you build. That's correct. Well, let's go see what they build. We're standing in one of the Kirk Ray apartments with, of course, more family, Sandra and Greg Jr., the two people in charge of sales and leasing for Kirk Bray. Greg, tell me a little bit about this apartment. This apartment here is our two bed, two bath. It's 1,340 square feet, and actually one of the largest two bed, two baths in Northern Rhode Island. And do you have smaller ones? We do. We have studios, we have one bedrooms, we have smaller two bed, one baths, and up to two bed, two baths that we're actually in right now. And I couldn't help but notice beautiful view. Yes, there is, and actually a lot of the units are half decks. Uh, the place itself is in great shape. There's a lot of open land here, and uh, people will like the open space they have here. Sandra, Kirkbray, very conveniently located. Yes, it is. We're across from Kirkbray Country Club. Uh, easy access to three major highways, and next to the Lincoln Mall. And for commuters, Boston, Providence, very easy access, and it's a very quiet neighborhood. It is. Tell us about the amenities. 
We have a new pool, a fitness center, and we have close access to the bike path. Uh -huh, so you can go out and get a little exercise in the woods. Absolutely. And we have wonderful service. Yes, we do, actually. Our service here is second to none. It's all family operated, as you already know. Everyone here is taken care of properly. Our number one priority is customer service. We're a customer service company. And it's just, if anything ever happens here at any point for any service, any emergency, lockouts, no heat, no hot water, we're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even holidays, and we're answering the phone ourselves. There's no company answering the phone. It's going to be us answering the phones personally. So it's more than just being a tenant here. You have security and peace of mind. Absolutely. It's very important to us that our tenants or our residents are taken care of properly. Like family. What more can they say? Our overall experience with Fig and Doors has just been so positive. We were so impressed with the knowledge and the quality of the doors. Our old doors had these four panel seams that were a constant eyesore. Our previous door had a flat front, no really design to it. The new doors, virtually seamless. And I just love the vertical flats along with the windows. Fagan Doors was able to match the architecture associated with the other arches on the property. The doors have really enhanced our home. Struggling with sleep apnea? Absolute Respiratory Care can help. We are owned and operated by two respiratory therapists. They each are actively taking part in the business every day. We have a team approach, whether it's our team here at the office working together, working with them, working with the patient. Absolute Respiratory Care carries a wide variety of CPAP masks and the latest sleep therapy technology. We take pride in going above and beyond for our patients. For a better night's sleep, choose Absolute Respiratory Care. Expert service, competitive prices. La Cava and Sowers Via Auto Parts. Our third generation family owned business has been the trusted authority for 30 years. For large jobs, small jobs, or anything in between, even special orders. With over 30 vehicles in our fleet, we can do what the other guys can't. With over 100,000 parts in stock at three convenient locations Fall River, Somerset, and New Bedford. Order online, pick up in store at lacavas.com. For your next repair, the key is La Cava and Sowers Via. You've been in a serious accident. You're rushed to the hospital and in serious pain. In pain, call Wayne. Wayne Resmini has the expertise to get you the compensation you deserve for the accident, medical expenses, and lost wages. He handled my case and uh, got me a very reasonable settlement. No, it's better than reasonable. And he far exceeded any expectations I've ever had. Call 888-RESMINI. In pain, call Wayne. Toyotathon is on at Toyota of Dartmouth. New 2015 Corolla LEs are just $16,698 or lease for $97 a month. New 2015 Camry LEs are only $20,488 or lease for $125 a month. And new 2015 RAV4 LE all-wheel drives are just $23,098 or lease for $145 a month. Plus 2014 Toyota certified pre-owned Camrys for only $17,998. Toyota of Dartmouth, your hometown dealer of choice. Welcome back. We're here in Cumberland. Before we visit a business that's been in town for over 25 years, let's discover more about Cumberland. And who better to ask than the mayor? Here in the historic Cumberland Town Hall with the mayor of Cumberland, Dan McKee, mayor for 12 years. Mayor, thank you for being on the show. Well, thanks for the invite and thank you for coming to the town of Cumberland. It's always good to be back. Yes, you were a resident of our town and grew up in our town right in the same neighborhood that I did. What makes it such a great town to live in? Well, I think it's the people who live here. We have our share of business, but uh, primarily people come because the schools are really good. And we just did about a $50 million building improvements to our schools. We have a, a school of choice in our high school campus that is second to none. And we have great uh, options in terms of library services and, and sport activities and very high involvement. And, and it's also a very caring community, as you, as you know. Now, Matt, to attract big companies and small companies, there's got to be some sort of incentive. For instance, tax. Is there any incentive tax-wise? What we do is, in our community, I believe that fair is fair and that everybody pays their own fair share. So we have one real estate tax. Everybody pays the same tax rate. So that allows businesses to come in and do major expansions like we have a Fortune 100 company in CVS 
We just did a 600,000 square foot uh, expansion in our community. Tiffany has their world headquarters for, for some of the jewelry production in our community. And we have Oakenite, which is a world leader in development of wire exploration, is just doing about a 300,000 square foot expansion into our community. And so the tax structure is, was a big key. The other thing that for businesses is that you do the very best you can to make sure that the licensing strategy, the zoning issues, and you can fast track these things. So we fast track CBS. We fast tracked Oakenite, always room for improvement, but uh, we try to make it a business friendly community. Well, we've heard about some of the big businesses here in Cumberland. Now it's time to talk about some of the best businesses. Any recommendations, Mayor? All of them. I think everyone is a great business. Well said from the Mayor. We're at Dean Warehouse Service, a father-son family operation for almost 35 years. I'm with Brad Dean Sr., founder of the organization. Brad, how did you get started? In 1977, I started a small trucking company. And at that time, I recognized that I wanted my business model to be transportation and warehousing. In 1980, I went and rented a small building in Pawtucket, and we've been growing ever since. So you lease storage space, and lots of it. Yes, we do, but it's uh, quite a bit more complicated than just leasing space. Next stop, let's go to the warehouse and talk to Brad Jr. Dean Warehouse Services. The warehouse part is self-explanatory. Brad, could you elaborate on the service part? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we basically are responsible for handling manufacturers, whether it be international or domestic products. We take it into our building. We scan it into the inventory, which goes into our warehouse management system, which is then stored until the customer places an order with us, in which we go out, pick the case, the skid, the piece, slap a label on it, package it, and send it out to the uh, final destination. So we would handle anything east of the Mississippi out of this location, or out of our California location, we'd handle anything west of the Mississippi, where they determine the best two locations off of distribution. Now, I'm sure that you know where every product is at any given time, but do your customers know where their product is when they use your services? Yeah, they do. Just a few years ago, we implemented a new warehouse management system, and they can actually log into our website, and they can see their product, whether it's in the warehouse, in transit, or if it's been delivered to the customer. So basically, you could have a customer or a manufacturer that's on the West Coast or globally, and they could ship their products, store them here, and then call upon them at any time to be brought to particular outlets and they never have to handle the product. Yes. Give me an idea of how big Dean Warehouse Service is in terms of square footage. Well, we currently have about 1.5 million square feet under our operation, Rhode Island and California. Currently looking to expand into possibly Midwest Canada and uh, southern part of the country. Now you say you cater to many different size clients. Are there any minimum sizes that you can lease? No, not at all. Whether you have 1,000 square feet or 350,000 square feet, there's no size requirement, we handle it all. 350,000 square feet of secured space that's indoor, I presume, that's nine acres. Dean Warehouse Service, a lot more than meets the eye. Big or small, Dean Warehouse Service does it all. Well, that was fun. We learned about some great businesses here in the Cumberland-Lincoln area. Join us next time as we discover Rhode Island. Okay, all set. Can I get down now? Brad, whoa.